I know you're someone that wants us to be generous in terms of numbers to those that come into this country as refugees. And we could argue we've been very generous in the last year, haven't we? Very generous to Hong Kong. I mean, you know, tens of thousands, getting on for 100,000 people have come from Hong Kong. Generous to refugees from Afghanistan. Uh, we are becoming, albeit through slow bureaucracy, generous to refugees, I mean genuine refugees that are coming from Ukraine. We are by nature a very generous country. Yeah, I agree, we are. But when it comes to the overall numbers coming here, we lag behind our European partners. Ah, but they don't do it voluntarily. They do it because they've got a problem coming across the Mediterranean. Yeah. It's, this is not something they've chosen, is it? No, I agree with you. Being an island, we have a choice. Yes. And, and that's a valid point. I think this new... Um, I heard the minister who came on before. Yep. I think this Rwandan offshoring policy is fraught with difficulties. Um, I'm here to talk about the legal problems they're going to have. Yes, I mean, I did touch at the end of that interview with him on the whole human rights act. It seemed to me that as soon as you get a case of abuse or several cases of abuse in these holding centres in Rwanda, uh, suddenly under human rights, uh, you know, there'll be court cases and you, well, you can't fly people there because their human rights could be put in jeopardy. Is that kind of how the playbook could work? You're partly right. We, even if we came out of the European Convention on Human Rights, it wouldn't make any difference. The key problem for the government is Article 31 of the Refugee Convention ah, and yes. how we interpret that. Yes. You've, we've been yes. here before. Yes. So the three quick questions are, um, do you need to claim asylum in the first country? The Convention says you don't. The government says you do. Mm. Uh, the next question is, if you come in clandestine, should you be treated less favourably? The new bill says, yes, you can. Mm. The Convention says you can't. So, actually, I was wrong. It's not just the Human Rights Act that needs to be amended. This convention was drawn up in 1951. Right. The world's a completely different place. We need to address that too, don't we? Uh, I think we, we drafted that convention. It was in, British lawyers in who drafted it. post-World War II, in a very different world, Ivan. No, I disagree. I, I think it was drafted loosely for a reason. You have to remember, and Ukraine is a good example, people fleeing with what's on their back. So when you're in face with that situation, you can't have hurdles and rules as you do with an immigration What about, what about brand new iPhone 12s, very expensive training shoes? Because that's what we see quite a lot coming across the channel, isn't it? Um, I, I couldn't comment on that. But the, the well, convention, I've, I've been there, I've seen yeah. it. The, the problem is, is that this policy is in breach of our international obligations. You mentioned the Human Rights Act. You're right. It's a clear breach of Article 3, uh, inhumane degrading treatment. We're getting into bed with a country with a terrible record of torture. Of um, no, Boris Johnson said it's the safe, one of the safest places in the world. I heard him earlier. Yeah, I think I, I dealt with asylum seekers from Rwanda. Um, I think in the mid noughties they were one of the worst offenders of torture of detainees. And what once they're in Rwanda, what about the control? Because we heard the minister say, "Well, they're not our responsibility." What are the checks? That was, and yeah, I mean, that was if they if, if they went to Rwanda yes. and failed the test. What are the checks and balances? Oh, how are we? Once we hand people over to Rwanda, who is going to check? No, I, listen. These are unanswered questions, yes. and I, I, I don't think the minister can answer those questions. No. They haven't no. fully thought this all through. But I put it to you: it's a very important political imperative in this country that we stop this cross-channel. I agree with trade. you. Trade. People are infuriated about it. They see like, a sense of unfairness about it. You know, they say, look, my kid can't get on the council housing list, and yet we're housing all these people. What do we do? We don't take enough refugees. We've been here oh, before. We've, we've been taken, here before. We've just look, taken 100,000 from yes, Hong Kong, yes. 15,000 from Afghanistan. Yes. Goodness knows how many in the end from Ukraine. And you want us to take more? No. I want us to take our fair share of people like people fleeing from Yemen and Syria and Afghanistan, who don't come within the um, <clears throat> government schemes, who are just simply fleeing. Look, the biggest pull factor f to come to the UK, and you've read the report by yeah. who an organisation which did a survey in Calais, is I've got a brother in the UK and I've got a mother. And what's going to happen is with this new policy... And it may be true. Oh, I, I've got experience of it over 25 years. Yeah. 
And so because we've taken a lot of refugees before, over the last 25 years, they've got members who are now going to join them. You are one of these lefty lawyer open borders types that Boris talked about today, aren't you? Uh, actually, you couldn't be more further from the truth, because <laughs> I'm a paid-up Conservative member. Are you? Well, yes. there you are.